Hey everyone, it's Wingspan TT, and if you're watching, you know what time it is. It's time for Duels <laughs> of the Planeswalkers Matter 2014. Now, this is not about my lung capacity. This is about Guardians of Light, the aura-based mono-white deck in this game. Now, of course, there's two mono-white decks. There's this one, Avacyn's Glory, also known as Avacyn's Cheating. It's so goddamn good. Um, but both of these decks are decks that we now have full deck guides of on TopJetTactics.com. I'm going to be creating a match here, a multiplayer match. Go on, see if we can face some people, see if we can face someone who aren't, someone who isn't a cheater. Now, of course, um, last time, or maybe it was two videos ago, I believe I faced someone named Muwanu, and I called him out for playing, I think, some kind of second first or second turn Eldrazi. Now... I just want to state for the record, the real Moano has contacted me over Wizards of the Coast chat and has let me know that there are actually two Moanos. Him, the original good Moano, and a second Moano who is the imposter Moano who stole his name, stole his identity. It's kind of like that um, comedy with Jason Bateman, except there's no funny fat chick in it. Or maybe there is. I don't know. Anyway, good Moano, bad Moano. We can only hope that they face each other at some point in the future, cancel each other out and the good Moana triumphs. Oh, come on, big who, boo who, wants to leave, doesn't want to face me. Um, not a big fan of this chat, by the way. You know, the UI, the UX, the whole design thing of Magic 2014, Duels of Planeswalkers in general, is pretty good. But the chat and the PC version, not so great. Like, if you click down here, yeah, you can click in here. And you can type something. You hit Y to chat. Um... You know, type it in here, blah, 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 Y button chat, but there's no easy way to get out. If you just hit the escape button, it just doesn't like, oh, okay, I, I guess the escape button does take you out of the chat here, but in the game, the escape button doesn't take you out of the chat. The escape button, there's no easy way to hide the chat. You can't move the chat. It's in the middle of the screen. Um, here we have Artie, um, who wants to play. Also, the other weird thing is, you know, on Windows, if you hold down the button, it repeats, but here, if you hold it down, it just kind of repeats like really soon. Like if you just press the button, it's like, oh, it just starts going to repeating mess right away so Artie's got the bleeding from the eyes thing going on I've got the is it thing going on and I also have a giant cat on my load screen going on my first hand here not looking too great one land not something you can stick with and um this is a very strange hand but I got two removals here I got pacifism got pariah uh overall I think this could be a pretty good hand to start with double removal helps and as long as I draw some kind of creature, I should be good. He looks like he's playing Dead Walkers. Again, another deck that we do have uh, a full deck guide of at TopTreeTactics.com. And I have mentioned this before in my videos, but if you're trying to learn how to play these decks, you want to know, okay, what cards are good, what cards are bad, why, um, what circumstances could some cards be useful. You definitely want to come to Top Tree Tactics, check out the deck guides. You'll learn a lot. Let's see, Retether, a pretty good card there. Really, really good card. He's playing Butcher Ghoul. 1-1 one, one, Undying. I'm not a big fan of that card, but it, it does have its purposes. It works really well with sacrifice effects that are very, very prevalent in Dead Walkers. I'm getting thrown off here because Artis has the Herald of Angels title, and yet he's working with zombies. He's like a race trader. He went from right to black, white to black. Not that I really believe in that kind of thing. And not that the white in general really, it really even represents anything inside magic lore. People always think of white as being good, but it doesn't really mean good. It just means that white believes in good and evil. It means that white is the judgmental color. It's like, hey, you guys, I know it's right and you are wrong and blah, blah, blah. We all know someone like that in our lives. Sometimes they're a super religious person. Sometimes it's not religion. Sometimes they're just super uppity. We have something else like they're just really, really into health food and they need to tell you about it every fucking five seconds. I used to work with a guy used to work with a guy who, um, big health food fanatic. And look, I like to eat healthy. I like to cook my own food. That kind of thing. Let's see here. I could pacify Sunstriker's lifelink. I could throw pacifism on his black cat so he can't sack it. I could give a spirit mantle on here, make it a 3-3 protection from creatures. So then he can't block and I'll gain three life. Um, that's sounding pretty good, actually. Because I just don't want to interact with black cat or I'm going to have to discard a card at random. That could be really, really bad. Um, so here, hopefully he doesn't remove it and... You know, just do me in anyway. Swing here, go back up to 19, bring it down to 17. Debt! Protection, by the way. That's what um, protection for creatures means. Let me get the chat out of the way here. Debt means it cannot be damaged. D, it cannot be enchanted or equipped. E, it cannot be blocked. B, it cannot be targeted. T, by anything with the property it says. So protection of creatures cannot be damaged, enchanted, blocked, or targeted by anything that's a creature. And Doomblade is decidedly not a creature, killing my guy. I lose both my cards. At least I got swing the health. Six up, three up for me, three down for him. Diary got cool. Sorry, guys. 
my uh, my wine is not sitting too well here. Anyway, so that person I worked with, super judgmental about food. And I remember there's a time where I'm sitting there. I was eating like organic yogurt with Honey Nut Cheerios. And I'm sitting there at my desk, minding my own business. And he comes over and he's like, and he's like Wings fan. Wing, well, I mean, he doesn't say Wings fan. It's not my name. But he's like, what are you, what are you, what are you eating? Um, I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you, you're going to put that in your you're gonna put that in your body? I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna put that in my body. Um, and uh, that was, I don't know, just that kind of thing. That's a very white thing. It's a belief in right and wrong. The belief that you're righteous, that you have all the answers, and you are going to disseminate the answers with great vengeance down on other people. So it can be evil. It can be definitely be evil. I decided here, um, no real reason to stick the pride down right away. I could drop the pacifism, but what if you play something really nasty next turn? I almost just kind of want to pass. And set up, you know, I have the combo in my hand, Pariah and Indestructibility is ready to go. Let's see, is there anything worth pacifying? Ah, I could pacify ah, the Black Cat. Then I don't have to worry about it, or I could drop in as Undead Guy. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have to worry about the Black Cat. I don't plan on blocking it. But now he cannot trigger the Undying unless he gets a Sacrifice Effect um, into next turn. So that thing's pretty much out of the picture. Black Cat I can ignore. Once I get my combo going, I'm going to be totally good. Combo Rific. And here we go. He's going to play another one. Butcher Ghouls. I'm really afraid. I'm really afraid. Once he hits three swamps, I'm going to be in really big trouble. Uh, that's when he gets that little butcher, that big flesh flash bag, flesh flash bag. Oh, God. If I were him, I would definitely swing with Black Cat. I would swing with anything, honestly, if I were him, because he knows that my deck revolves around enchanting my guys, beefing them with I don't know why he didn't swing with Black Cat. He probably wants something on defense. And his other creatures are not super good at... I don't know. He's got Undying Guys. I, I would have swung fire him. Of course, I'm not going to block. not going to lose my only creature and leave him with three creatures on board and me with zero. That is not a good board position to be in. Here, ooh, planes. So I could retether and bring up Spear Mantle, but that seems like a waste. I could drop ind Indestructibility, basically making my guy um, a really, really good blocker. Pretty much nothing can stop him. Could drop Pariah on him first, but that would be really risky to drop Pariah on a one toughness creature without the indestructible and here's how it works Pariah redirects all damage that would go to me to the enchanted creature instead indestructible means that damage can't destroy the creature and nothing can destroy it really except for sacrifice effects um, and bounce effects and things that aren't in that deck although sac effects are in there so I think the smart thing to do is to drop the indestructibility on my little Leonin Ho like Lion -O. And now he's going to be indestructible. Nothing's going to take him down. Indestructible. Um, I really miss that. I miss that from the original Street Fighter 4. <clears throat> that J-pop crap. Like, it was garbage, but it was so catchy. It just burned into your brain. Um, and the new intro for Street Fighter just does not have that pop to it. I really like the art, by the way, and indestructibility, too. Just like a nuke went off. Like, literally a nuke went off where that guy was standing. And he's totally fine. Enchanted, Enchanted permanent has indestructible, and it is worth pointing out that indestructible ability can be used on non-creature permanents, although there's not too many of those that you would want to use it on in this deck. And here, I could block either one of these damage, but I'm going to trigger the Undying of the Butcher Ghoul. It will come back as a 2-2. Two -two. I'm going to take the one damage from the Black Cap. I don't want to have a chance of randomly getting rid of my Pariah. My Pariah. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. So I can now drop Pariah on my indestructible guy. Swinging with impunity for three damage. He can either block it, although I believe one of his creatures can't block. And um, or he could not block it, take the three damage, go down to 14. The question is, does he understand how his combo works? But you'll see now. See, this creature takes damage instead of me. Can't die from damage, can't die from damage that goes to it, can't die from damage that goes to me. And unless he can kill his creature, he has. He basically does not have a lot of options. So I'm going to swing in here. And there's really no reason to use my pacifism now since his creatures are no longer a real threat. I can save it into the next turn. If he leaves his black cat um, back to block, I can throw pacifism on it and then swing in. Because I really, really, really don't want to discard a card. So I, now I've left myself totally open. So if he has a way to get rid of my creature, I'm totally screwed. If he drops a land, I'm screwed. Okay, he's going to drop this thing instead. Not too scared yet. Um, now I guess he should just leave his creatures to back to block okay i does he not get how this works i don't think he gets how this works so my creature will still take the damage see it still goes down to zero toughness it just won't actually be destroyed blade of six pride looking super cool she is looking hot in her like savannah bikini there um 
She doesn't die from the damage, though. Planes on the battlefield. I could retether. Doesn't really look like there's a point to that right now, though. He didn't leave back any notable blockers. I believe that only creature he has, the 2 1 creature, can't actually block. So I'm not going to retether. All I would do is give me slightly more um, damage. And uh, what would make it a 4 2? Uh, I don't really see it being super useful. And of course, if my creature dies, being able to retether later would be very, very useful because I could instantly bring back the combo onto one of my new creatures. So, no retether, no pacifism, nothing but net. Hopefully, he sees now that he's getting locked out of the game. But what I really, really need to do is top deck a creature. If I top deck a creature, what's going to do is solidify my board position. It's going to make it impossible for him to just make me. Please don't be flashback. Yes. Yes, Grouse Messenger. Now, of course, that is that is a way for him to get around. He could make me lose life, and losing life is not the same as taking damage. Um, so I just got knocked down to 10 there. He's still at 11. He's probably going to leave his creatures back to block, including Hello Kitty back there. Hello Kitty. And um, luckily I have the 6 mana drop. Dawn Elemental. Dawn Elemental, really cool creature. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to Dawn Elemental. So Dawn Elemental actually combos directly with Pariah by itself. You don't need indestructibility with it. Now, of course, Dawn Elemental could die to other effects that are not destroy effects, that are not damage effects, um, but it combos automatically with Pariah. But now I'm kind of safe, so if he forces me to sacrifice a creature, I could sack Dawn Elemental instead of my land in and keep my combo going. I also have two mana left, which is perfect top deck. Um, you know, I have the right combination here. I can drop my Pacifism on his Black Cat, prevent him from blocking making me discard retether. I think I'm going to do that. And then, of course, swing for three. Now now he has a choice. He can block, activate one of his little undying things, although I don't... Does he have that option anymore? No, he doesn't. He'll have to lose a blocker or just take the damage, and he's going to take it. Going down to eight. I'm going to pitch a no-hitter. Ladies and gentlemen, he's not going to block anything this whole match. Now, of course, um, let's see here. Four mana. What does he got? Tendrils of Corruption. What he doesn't know is he deal X damage to the Dawn Elemental, gain X life, but he can't deal damage that doesn't gain any life. But wait, he gained life? What? Okay, when Tendrils of Corruption deals X damage and you gain X life. Okay, so although it seems like it's a siphon effect, the damage from Tendrils of Corruption is not actually contingent. The life gain is not contingent on the damage, it looks like. So even though he didn't actually deal the X damage, he still gained the X life, um, so he went up to 12. But, so I need to get 12 damage through. And normally I'm not a big fan of um, stacking all my enchantments on one guy. But let's see, Armored Ascension will give this creature plus 6, plus 6, plus 1, plus 1 for each planes I control. And flying. Now normally I would never play this on one creature and have 3 enchantments on one creature. But in this case it's going to make it a 9, uh, a 9, 7 creature plus a 3, 3. That's 12 lethal damage going straight to the face of Artie. So again, I'm not, I don't typically like to do this, but because he's tapped out, because he has no way to block my flyers, and because Dawn Elemental um, already has flying, looks like I'm going to be dropping it here. It looks like it's all over for Artie. Artie, 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 you thought you are so smarty. Your game was farty. It's time for a party. Swinging it for lethal damage. Now, I won't just end it now. I had lots of people complaining to me, Wingspan, Wingspan, why don't you play more games? Uh, in each video. Okay, I can do that. We can go. I'm going to give Artie a chance to redeem himself. We can do best two out of three. Something like that. And let's see how it goes. Let's see if... And I don't know if he's going to stick with the same deck or anything like that. But we'll just go straight into it. I'm going to stick with Guardians of Light. I want to explore his deck. And I want to remind everyone that if you go to TopTierTactics.com, you'll see a big button at the top of the of the site, which is um, Duels of Planeswalkers. You can check out all of Duels of Planeswalkers articles, including full deck guides for Guardians of Light and pretty much every other deck in the game. I'm going to draw a new hand here um, because having a bunch of enchantments, no creatures, not particularly good. Here I have one creature. I have one part of my combo with Pariah. I have a board sweep with Final Judgment. Here you have Pariah. I really like the art with Pariah. Pariah was just coming out when I started playing the game. I believe it came out in Exodus, which Exodus, Pariah, seems like a really good flavor match. And we have Final Judgment. Six men exile all creatures. That is a great card for this matchup because not only does it kill all creatures and it's very easy to get swarmed by creatures with dead walkers. Doesn't actually kill them, exiles them, removes them for the game. So they don't go to the graveyard where they can be recurred. They do not trigger on dying because the creatures don't die. They get exiled. Um, it's all around a win. He is he used um, Sign in Blood there, which is kind of to my game because now he's tapped out. I know he's not going to Doom Blade my guy. I could just swing him with Impunity. He actually has to discard a card because he's got eight cards in hand. I got my creature here. Sarah for the sword, by the way. Also, instant combo. With Pariah. 
I'll explain this in a second. And it's core spirit dancer. Look at her. She's got the hotness. She's ra she's rocking the zero two booty. She's got the badunka dunk. Really, 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 really good card. I mean, look at this. Whenever you play an aura, you get to cast. You get to draw a card. Whenever you cast it, you draw a card. Before it even resolves, even whether or not the creature they play it on survives to live another day. Um, and of course, if you cast them on her, she gets super beefy. And I, and I don't know. Just amazing. <laughs> I never got the art for this card anyway. It's like she she's this creature. She gets pumped up by auras. She's a zero two. But like where there's no auras in the picture. There's a bunch of creatures. Like you would expect this to be like whenever you cast um, creatures, you get a plus one plus one sexy token or something like that. You you get a music video. Um, Lord of the Undead three mana. I could drop Pariah on him to kind of um, dissuade him from attacking. I could drop Pariah. Uh, somewhere else. I'm just gonna swing. There's no way he's gonna block. There's no way he's gonna be willing to lose Lord of the Undead to my little three-one creature. He's gonna take the damage to the face, going down to twelve. And now comes Seraph of the Sword. Seraph of the Sword, by the way, combos with Pariah. Seraph of the Sword combos with Pariah because Seraph of the Sword says prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to this angel. Now. <clears throat> When the damage gets redirected through Pariah, it does not change what type of damage it is. So if there's combat damage incoming that would hit you, it gets moved to Seraph's Sword and then gets reduced to nothing. So she doesn't take any damage. So it's not quite indestructible. If you took a bolt or other damage to the face, um, she would die. But it would still protect you, which is cool. Grave Pact. Holy shit, I didn't even know that was in the deck. Whenever uh, they lose a creature, I have to sack a creature. This is really powerful. This was coming out Exodus 4 mana enchantment. When I first started playing Magic 15 years ago, yes, 15 years ago, ladies and gentlemen, I am that old. Um, uh, Grave Pact was already considered a really cool card. It was a cool card. People put this in their decks. That's one of those really, really, really good cards in multiplayer decks. I feel like Tutor is going to let me search out enchantment. Now, I could search out enchantment. I could go get Sigil of the Empty Throne. I could drop something on Core Spirit Dancer so that she could attack. Um, I don't even know exactly what I have in this build of the deck. Like, I almost feel like I should just search my library, see what I have, see if there's anything worth it. Because uh, it's not like I'm going to cast Pariah this turn. Um, so let's see here. I could get Sigil, the Empty Throne, Daybreak Cornet. It's not going to be useful. Griffin Guide is cool, but I don't have three mana left. It's like I could get Angelic Destiny. He does have Grave Pact on the table, ladies and gentlemen. So if I, if I have a lot of cards dying, Angelic Destiny would allow me to um, get this enchantment back. I think I'm going to go with that. Bring that to my hand. Very cool. He gets to see this. And by the way, Angelic Destiny, great card. Amazing art. This is my wallpaper from my desktop PC. Plus four, plus four. Creature becomes an angel flying for a strike. And I'm just going to swing in here like, bro, bro, do not even mess with my army. Do Wait. Oh, fuck. No. No, no, no. No. Hold. Oh, God. Wait. What was I doing? What was I doing? Angelic Destiny. I was going to play Angelic. When was I going to play? Wait, why did I attack? Why did I attack with that guy? No, that was bad. That was bad. Okay, and now we see why Grade Pact is good. Fuck, I should not have swung with that guy. I should just stay in with the flyer. Okay, so what happened was he decided to block. So he lost the creature, but because he lost the creature, even though I also lost the creature, I had to sack another creature. And that's why Grave Pact is evil, and I just messed up because I'm too seduced by the awesome, sexy art of Angelic Destiny to be paying attention. Luckily, next turn I can cast Angelic Destiny on my creature, swing for six damage to the face. Okay, this is gonna be oh, tendrils of corruption. Whoa, 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 whoa. hold on, hold the phone, hold the phone, Artie, Artie, you shouldn't have done that. Now I know you have it. Now I know you have it. Of course, I'm not gonna cast my champion knowing that it's tendrils of corruption. He's just gonna wait the millisecond I cast it. He, <laughs> now I know you have it. No, <laughs> just let him know here. So there's no reason for me to uh, not gonna throw my cards away. Not gonna throw my cards away. Um, no reason to play it. So I'm just gonna skip. There is absolutely no reason for me to play my creatures now. And he's probably gonna just get, try to leave four mana open. Now if I were him, I'd probably just cast tendrils at the end of the turn here anyway. Wipe out my creature. The core spirit dancer. Be super jealous of her sexiness. Um, and where is it? What does he got? Does he have Titan? Is he going to drop Titan? Because I can pry a Titan. Totally pry a Titan. Black Cat. Not afraid of that. That. Not afraid of the cat. I'm not a scaredy cat. 1-1. One, one, I can block it all, all day with my 0-2 booty. Come at me, cat. Come at me. Um, it is it is cool, though. Zombie Cat. I like it. 1-1. One, one. Okay. And here I got Admonition Angel. Super powerful. 6-6 six, six flying. Allows me to exile anything I want whenever I play a land. 
super cool because I could exile Grave Pact or something else. Um, and I want to play an enchantment, but I know he's sitting on Tendrils of Corruption. If I were him, I'd just Tendrils anyway. And see, that is actually kind of the problem um, with this game compared to Magic the Gathering Online. That is actually the largest difference between Duels of Planeswalkers and the real rules of Magic. And that is there is no priority in Duels of Planeswalkers. So in real Magic, the active player always has the opportunity to play things first. Like they get to play things, then when they choose not to, they pass the turn. And then the, then the other players in player order get to choose whether or not they play things. So you can't just be sitting there and the other player's thinking in the middle of their main phase and you're like, oh, before you play a land, I'm casting this instant. You can't do that. Now, when the active player in real magic says, okay, I'm done with my main phase, I'm passing priority, then you're allowed to play things. Or when the active player says, I'm going to activate this ability or I'm going to play this spell, then I can pass priority and then you can play something in response. But until that happens, you can't just be sitting there in the middle of your turn being like, boom, tendrils of corruption. Doesn't matter what you were doing, tendrils of corruption. Because you don't have priority to play that over when I play a land or over when um, I, you know, pay um, pay costs for things like sacrifice costs. By the way, Admonition Angel, so cool. Look at her. She's just owning it. Like, she she's just looks huge. And now the tendrils come. He goes up to 15 life. They're swinging with the cat. I'm going to take it to the face. I really, really hope. Really hope against hope. I hit a land. Hit a land there. Okay, he's got 44 cards in deck, 4 cards in hand, 4 cards in the library. I wish he had 14 life. It would have been like the stars would be aligned. Yeah, whoops. All right, he misplayed it. Now here, he could have removal. He could have Doomblade. I'm going to hope he doesn't. Admonition Angel would really, really like to see play. She is a 6-6 six, six for 6 flying. That, if that, That's already really good. Already really good. If that wasn't good enough, every time you play a land, you get to remove something from the game until she dies. I mean... Absolutely brutal. I have this in my angel deck. I have a really cool EDH deck uh, with Radiant Archangel as my general, as my commander. And look at her. She's just owning the church. She's taking up, like, forget the altar, ladies and gentlemen. You got to worship me. Uh, we are having masses at 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, one for each wing because um, I want to get worshipped. And for some reason, Artie thinks I'm dumb enough to block ba Black Cat. I am not dumb enough to block Black Cat. I will take the one damage to the face. Going down to 18. Ooh, scary. I'm going to lose the game in 18 turns of attacks. Of course, um, I know that Herald of Angels... Uh, I keep reading that name. Could definitely have some. Got Lord of the Undead. Could throw a Pariah on that. Um, really depends what I draw next turn. If I draw a land, I could exile Lord of the Undead. I could exile Grave Pact, which would be really good, which would kind of... Um, protect me from some kind of cool, some kind of sacrifice or death effect. Uh, oh, man. And Grouse Messenger. And Grouse Messenger. So I'm going to lose two life, going down to 16. So I feel like now the smart thing to do would be to put Pariah on Lord of the Undead. And here comes a land. So because Pariah can handle Lord of the Undead, I don't need to use the angel's ability to handle the Lord of the Undead. Instead, what I could do, and there's no point in putting Pry and Grouse Messenger, he'll just use it to kill himself. I do have Final Judgment as a backup plan. I could play the planes, get rid of Grave Pact, get rid of Grave Pact, and uh, then throw Pry on there. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Goodbye. Grave Pact getting exiled, removed from the game. There it is. So that's gone until my angel dies. Going up, Cloud of Feathers, throwing that down, Pry. So you can attack me, bro. Already, you can come at me, bro. Keep swinging, but your um, person is going to die. And I'm going to throw down Angelic Destiny while they're tapped out. So even if my angel dies, I still get my, I still get four damage this turn, and I still get to swing for ten. Take me out to the ball games. Take me out to the crowd. Bring me my Angelic Destiny. I don't care if she. Okay, I don't have anything that rhymes with that. Really cool art. Look at that art. She's got Emiri Angels in the background. I really love the art in Zendikar. It's a great block. You got the six things. You got this old school, Old Testament, biblical thing going on. Doom Blade could ruin my day. Nightmare would be able to ruin my day. It is a blocker in the sky. It is a 6-6 six, six flyer. Unfortunately, what Herald of Angels already doesn't know is I Spear Mantles gives protection from creatures. Protection from creatures means cannot be blocked by creatures. And now he's trying to decide, does he kill off his own creature or not? Um, see, that is the great thing about Pariah. It's like, yeah, you can, you can swing at me. You can do damage. It's not going to damage me, and you're going to lose a creature. So, really, really cool effect. And I pretty much won the game. So, could just swing it in here. I want Artie. Artie, I want you to know, um, which one's a voice chat button? 
voice chat button. Um, I want Artie to know. Artie, I'm Wingspan TET from TopGearTactics.com. It has been a pleasure playing you, and you might have had a chance, but unfortunately, I have Spirit Mantle. Unfortunately, I have Spirit Mantle. Of course, it was great playing you. It was really a lot of fun. I hope you come to my channel at YouTube.com slash WingspanTT to check this out. <laughs> and he's been a good sport about it. I hope everyone who's watching that you enjoyed this match, that you enjoyed this. Um, really great matches. I love Guardians of Light. Please come to the website. Check out my deck guide. Um, until then, I am the fourth best commentator on YouTube. I'll see you next time. Cheers.